Hello everyone, we're from SDD Group 10 and our group consists of 13 people. Uh, my name is Igusti Nguratata Aditya Warnam with a student number of 200251215. Uh, my name is Rebagus Dik Naranamas Manwaba with a student number of 200251210. Hello everyone, my name is Dewa Yubinta Kapatasari with the student number of 200251211. Hello everyone, my name is Madi Aykurniati Atmaja with the student number of 200251216. Hello, my name is Bagus Agung Sutra Arendubraha Dustandara with number of 200251219. Hello, my name is Niputrina Maharani with student number of 200251120. Hello, my name is Putu Sherita Hindi Pratiwi with the student number 200251121. Hello, my name is Natasha Ayakusparani with the student number of 200251127. Hi, my name is Joshua Francisco Sofian with the student number 200251129. Hello, my name is Krisanto Bramnarjo with the student number of 200251230. Hello, my name is Kimudi Julian Matulatan with student number 200251233. Hello, I'm Ardelia Clara Budiman with student number 200251234. Hello, my name is Amanda Raisa Suryananda with a student number of 200251237. And today we're going to present our literature review of making a good doctors, good teachers. Is it necessary? Um, so I will explain the background information of this presentation. As we know it, a doctor is a professional who specializes in health and healing disease. There is a term for doctor who, according to patient, are excellent in their profession, a good doctor. The necessary competency to earn the title of a good doctor are academic skill, communication skill, technical skill, attitude, interpersonal relation, and many more. These academic skills are essential for a doctor to diagnose the patient disease and to ensure the patient recovers to good health. Communication skill is also needed by a doctor to get the information and communicate verbally with their patient, patient family, and colleagues. Communication between patient and doctor is not only about consulting the patient's illness or giving treatment. In, in the United Kingdom, all doctors are expected to teach as it will be necessary for their career. A good quality healthcare relies on good communication between a doctor and a patient. It is one of the competencies that are essential for a doc good doctor to have to share their knowledge of health to patient and to ensure that the information can be easily understood by the patient. Uh, so for a good doctor to be titled as both as a good doctor and a good teacher, they need to know the problem experienced by the patient, know what to elaborate to the patient, and how to properly explain the diagnose, diagnosis to the patient. Next. The, uh, the objective of this literature review is to elaborate that being a doctor is not only about knowing or curing a patient illness, but also be about being a good teacher who educates on how to recover from a disease, avoid certain diseases, and keep the body healthy, and also a good communicator. A doctor profession requires the ability to communicate well in order to give information to the patient and be understood by them regardless of the patient background. So yeah, uh, now I'm going to talk about the benefits of good communication skills uh, for doctors especially. So the first benefit is of course, it helps to forge a significant relationship between the doctor and the patient. This enables the doctor to have a clearer view of what is actually go going on with the patient, thus enabling the doctor to give a more thorough diagnosis on the patient. This also helps the doctor to alleviate their work stress and elevates their job satisfaction because uh, patients are also more open towards their doctors, therefore increasing trust between doctors and their patients. The uh, communication skills are also very useful for serious clinical situations where uh, it demands for better communication skills in reducing the tension. And lastly, it gives the patient a clearer understanding on his or her medical 
condition, therefore allowing them to comply further to the medication given by the doctor. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to explain the problem formulation in this literature review. The first one is, what are the impacts or consequences when doctors are not a good teacher? And the second one is, what are the qualities a doctor must possess in order to become a good teacher? The third one is, what, what challenges are there during good doctor or teacher training in medical education? And the last one is, which methods should be used in teaching professionalism? Next. Now I'm going to present a definition of a good teacher. What is a good teacher? Uh, based on the studies, a good teacher in the eyes of a student is a good motivator, patient listening, listener, student-centered or democratic, hardworking, friendly, good-looking, unbiased, have principles, and light-hearted. With those personalities, students engage more with the teacher and eventually understand more about what the teacher taught them. Another way to consider assessing a good teacher is their teaching style. Review's research found that the teaching style of a good teacher includes clear explanation, fun and humor teaching, use and share in discussion, mastery of subject, and relate the concept with everyday occurrence. A teaching style like those may help students grasp the materials better. Transfer and disseminating of knowledge to the students can be achieved and will be preserved to be passed on generation to generation. Next. Impacts of mediocre teaching abilities in medical field. There are several impacts or consequences that we can found. That is, the first one is misconceptions within a doctor and the patients. A doctor should have a good communication skills in between medical teams, especially when dealing with the patient. In some cases, there are still a lot of misconceptions happens. For example, when a doctor starts reviewing a certain medications and asks the patients if they know why they are taking them. The majority of individuals are still unclear seeing them or are completely unaware with their indications. The second one is creating a negative feedback loop. A good doctor must be able to create an environment where we must solve of problems that are related to the case and having a curiosity towards some things and knowledge that can be applied in a real world situations. The third one is undesirable qualities of future doctors. So there are factors analysis that can be identified of six categories of qualities. So the patients, so doctor itself has to has has to have to have these six uh, capabilities. The fourth one is reduced effectiveness of medical treatment. A teacher who are not good usually fail to educate their students. This does the same with doctor and patient relationship. Patients have the right to know the illness they got, and a doctor have to be there to educate them. The fifth one is minimizing doctor's part in educating the society. In the state, with just typing a word in the search engine, we can find anything we want to know. However, there, there, there does the credibility of information that spread out in the internet. Sometimes raises a lot of questions. This does the same with the medical information. There's so many fake news and fake medical information spread out the internet. Uh, so in this case, the doctors have to maximize the education in the society. Thank you. Uh, next up is qualities a doctor must possess to become a good teacher. There are some elements that differentiates a normal teacher from a great teacher. Coming from the medical field, a doctor should be able to possess a few skills to differentiate themselves from being a normal teacher and being a great teacher. Here are some of those key elements. First off is communication skills. Having a good communication skill is important not only for the student itself, but also the teachers. This is especially true because with a good communication skill, a teacher could deliver his, his or her material more fluidly, thus increasing the effectiveness of the study and increasing the time efficiency in the process. Having a good communication skill is also important for medical school because students could also learn a lot from the tutor on how to communicate properly, not just to one another, but also how to communicate something with patients among other things, which could really be useful later on in professional life. Second one is, should be unbiased. A good teacher should never lean more towards one student rather than another, because this, once again, could hinder the learning process that is happening in class. Having a bias towards a particular student could damage the, the other student's mentality and how they perceive you as a tutor. 
having a particular bias to a student is also bad because students deserve to be treated equally regardless of their cultural background or knowledge possession. Uh, the next one is should be inspiring and motivational to, student, to students. Being inspiring and motivational to students is the key element to have yet somehow only few people possess. This element is particularly important to have, especially for medical teachers, because not every student has the same amount of motivations and drive to fiercely continue learning in this hard battlefield that is medical school. A teacher should be able to motivate their students and even be their role models to boost a student's morale and could make the students feel better for themselves. Such making the teaching and learning activities more effective and time efficient. Uh, coming in at last, but, not, but, but most certainly not the least, the quality of subjects. The quality sub of subjects, uh, this element is one of the most pop popular element of it to have according to several students. They believe that the subject itself play a big part on how a teaching session will turn out. A teacher should have be should be able to present their teaching materials in an interesting way that could make the students learn effectively, yet also not being bored in the process. Teachers should also have a decent knowledge of the subjects that she or he is process presenting to the students. Having a good quality subjects also boosts up the students' morale because they would think that the subject they are currently studying is important for to them and could very be well used in the future thus this decreasing the chance of, of student neglecting the subjects what are the challenges during training in the medical field first one is the creation of artificial intelligence basically the doctor holds on to three main tasks such as diagnosis treatment and prognosis however those tasks have been able and are being developed for AI to do. How should doctors overcome it? Practicing empathy and teaching more to their patients about disease should have the doctor to overcome because feelings and emotions are what sets humans apart from robots. Therefore, what should be emphasized is how human doctors are able to turn the AI weaknesses into an advantage along with medical school's curriculum to overcome AI with relevant and unique solutions. The second one is patients know better about their health condition compared to the doctor. With unlimited internet access, the patient could easily seek information about their symptoms and disease. Nevertheless, the patient often looks from only one perspective, whereas, doc whereas doctor analyzes from different perspectives. Questions regarding the occurrence of possible allergies or other complications should be handled wisely. Therefore, doctors should understand what the best way to straighten that situation by practicing more on patients and communication skills as early as possible. This point should be further emphasized in the curriculum regarding the code of ethics and leadership training. Okay, so the next one is different perception between digital native students and digital immigrant lectures. The continuous development of technology creates quite a large gap between digital native students and digital immigrant lecturers. Digital native students would rather use the internet as a learning platform where they can easily find diverse information at any time and anywhere. On the other hand, most lecturers in medical school are digital immigrants. Therefore, it requires pro require proper collaborative learning between students and lecturers. It is important for lecturers to understand and follow existing technology, considering the fact that nowadays most activities are carried out online. And the last one is motivation and burnout. Medical school is widely known as one of the most difficult majors. The first year in medical school was unbearable for some students as they were still in the transition between high school and university. They have to participate in many activities such as, such as lectures, practicum, exams, which forced them to study really hard. As time goes by, some starts to feel exhausted, depressed, lose their motivation, and burn out. To overcome this situation, it is important for medical students to find someone else to talk to, such as family or friends. Recalling about the motivation of taking medical school in the first place is also crucial in mood boosting. Besides that, medical students need to take care of their body by eating, sleeping, and laughing well. Next. 
Next, I will elaborate on methods used in teaching professionalism, specifically for young doctors, as it is common for experienced physicians to pass down their knowledge to young doctors. The first method is bedside learning. This actually is an effective way to learn clinical skills and communication skills. This method is where teaching activities occur with the presence of a patient. Here, doctors will be required to demonstrate their communication skills on how to obtain more detailed information from the patients by asking the right questions and professional behaviors to properly do physical examination on the patient. So if the doctors demonstrated badly, then the young doctors would catch on and follow the bad example. The second method is problem-based learning. This is a more student-oriented kind of learning. It is a type of approach where a group of learners are provided with a case, of, uh, with a case study based on real scenarios. They will need to collaborate with one another to work and solve the case. Learners are required to communicate with one another as well and give their own point of view. This method teaches them to develop higher order thinking skills, comprehension skills, and even aids in uh, better retention skills. This type of learning can actually help improve their communication skills as well. Okay, the third method is parallel playing. This teaching method is done through the involvement of roles. The method usually comprises of an act between a doctor and a patient in a certain situation where the physician may act as the patient exhibiting several symptoms to test the learner on how they would respond, or vice versa, the learner act as the patient. From this method, the learner would know what it feels like on being both sides and experience being treated by a physician to learn the correct way of responding to patient's complication. Next. In conclusion, we can conclude that a good teacher can be defined as a person who is friendly, a patient listener, has principal, lighthearted, and most importantly, possess the capability to transfer information or knowledge in a way that is understandable by other party. Conclusively, being a good doctor requires the competencies of a good teacher too. Having marvelous clinical skill or extensive knowledge means nothing if a doctor does not have the capability to communicate and explain detailed information about the disease or any other medical treatment that is being given to their patients. Through good communication skills, the patient will be more open about their history of disease and receive more sense of comfort in order to reduce any negative thoughts due to the illness or complications they suffer from. And without having a good teacher's competence, which is the communication skills, miscommunication may occur. And it may seem like a simple problem, but it may actually may have a major bad impact. And the patient may give complaints to the doctor, which might lead to conflicts and also bad reputation about the doctor's unprofessional behavior. And this is why, as a doctor, it is necessary to become a good teacher equipped with good communication skill to provide a clear explanation to the patients. These are the list of references that were used during our literature review. Hence concludes our presentation for today and thank you.